Hey, welcome to Speechless. We're glad to have you here live from the SCC studios in White Bear Lake. And we got a whole lot of good information for you today, uh, especially dealing with Crystal and the city of Crystal and what's happening with the uh, police department there, the city manager, the city attorney. And as we look at it, it deals in with the uh, Metro Gang Task Force. Uh, and a whole bunch of areas, and it even comes back in, into Maplewood, into our area, with some former police officers and sergeants. And so it is uh, fast, and Ramsey County Sheriff uh, Fletcher. So we have a whole lot of, of video today, and we're going to break down this story as much as we can. But as you'll see, new information is coming out every day, every week on this. And people are coming out uh, to the surface and saying, because information is getting out as to what's gone on in Crystal, what's gone on in Brooklyn Park with the Metro Gang Task Force and the information is getting out, and people are doing something. The citizens are doing something about this. Uh, investigations are starting to take place and this whole problem is being exposed. And thanks to people uh, like you and the video uh, viewing audience who watch, and call and act and show up. That's a key thing is showing up for these rallies and showing up and, and having a voice. And it's good to have people there. Other people can talk, but showing up is important to get a grasp. And that's what's happening in Crystal. And that's why I want, uh, we need to talk about this today. But before we do that, uh, we're gonna show a fun little video. Well, it's fun, but it's kind of, sad at the same time. Um, but uh, Tim Hawkins has a video called Insanities uh, DVD and has a, he's a comedian, a clean uh, humored comedian. And uh, here's a little video called The Government Can. So let's watch that. Makes me feel good. And uh, let's do it. Give you anything you like. You want free college, energy, mortgages, <laughs> whatever you like. You have come to the right place. Why? I'll tell you why. Who can take your money? Who can take your money? With a twinkle in their eye. A twinkle in their eye. Take it all away and give it to some other guy. The government. <laughs> the government. Who can tax the sunrise? Who can tax the trees? Let your own a business and collect up all the fees. The government. Oh, the government can. And the government can, cause they mix it up with lies and make it all taste good. Just throw away the Constitution I wrote that, thank you Who can give a bailout? Tell us to behave And make the Founding Fathers roll over in their grave the I don't care if you hate me, I'm going to sing it anyway Oh, the government can And the government can Cause they mix it up with lies and make it all yummy, yummy, yummy Soon we'll have to eat our dishes. She can't. She, how's that taste, kids? Delicious. Who can be a failure? Who can be a failure? In so many ways. In so many ways. And instead of getting fired, hey, we'll give ourselves a raise. <laughs> Kentucky, you know what I'm talking about. Oh, the government can. And the government can go. I did the choreography myself. <laughs> and your Uncle Sam can, cause he mixes it with eyes of make silver look good. And I feel so good, 
Cause the government says I Yeah, that's funny. You know, you look at that, a failure in so many ways, and then you, you call it good, and it just reminds me of the Maplewood Community Center, you know, where they take money from people, running about a 500000 deficit for all its existence. You know, it varies between a million and 300000 uh, Maybe one year it broke even or got close, but uh, tricky accounting may have taken place in there. And um, other, you know, you don't even get to use the place in Maplewood, and you have to pay for it. It's it's just atrocious, and and they think they're successful, and you got people on the city council that are continuing this pattern and not holding uh, the people who run the Maplewood con uh, Community Center accountable. But yet, the people aren't hoping, holding the council members accountable and the city manager. Uh, for getting that uh, in, into shape. So, by, by the way, elections this Tuesday, August 13th, for the Maplewood Mayor and City Council members. And if you see, saw the prior shows, a couple shows prior, about uh, 20 questions you need to ask your Maplewood uh, Council members and Mayor, um, you, you need to ask those questions. And I can tell you right now, one thing, and we're going to see in some of these videos, but beware of the trick. And the trick is uh, we get rid of the people who cause the problem, but then you have the people who are causing the problem, like Mayor Rossbach and Kathy Juneman and, uh, and the other guy that's gone. Uh, e either way, that team of people, they may not run, although Kathy Juneman is running, uh, but she's the last one of that group of people uh, that took away our private rights for our trash collections. Um, she's still running, but they replace those people with people of the same ilk, people with the same ideology, the people that want to limit your uh, liberties and take away citizens' participation uh, and their voice in the go local government. Uh, so that other citizens don't know what's going on in their community. And you're going to see the importance of other citizens knowing what's going on in their community uh, today as what took place in Crystal. But we have an election coming up. Don't be deceived. The people that are running on the um, Slawick, Nora Slawick uh, platform with Kathy Juneman and Marianne Abrams are the same people that are associated with the people that cause the problem, wants the problems to continue. So it's a big, big deal, this election coming up. So we're going to tie a lot of this together uh, here tonight. But uh, just to get this started off, people are getting active around uh, the country. And of course, Maplewood over the years, the last couple of years with the garbage situation, we've had about 300 people show up and protest the taking away our right to choose who's going to haul our garbage, our personal property, and dispose of it how we want it disposed in a clean, ethical manner. Uh, and the city comes in and says, no, we make that decision for you, and we're going to take your property, and we're going to make the money off of it. Uh, and that's just wrong all, all the way around. Uh, so Maplewood had big protest, and they unelected um, one person. One person resigned. Now the mayor is, is resigning, not rerunning. Only Kathy Juneman is left. So, but in Grant, another uprising is taking place. So let's just show the video. I don't need the volume on this, but uh, um, just the, what's happening in Grant. Um, so get that video up. And citizens are coming out and uh, protesting. Now, Grant's not a very big city, but there's a lot of... Uh, things going on in Grant that just aren't right. Uh, they don't have freedom of speech. They don't have the right to address. The mayor gets to decide whether you get to talk or not after he looks at what you're going to say. I mean, that's a mentality of sickness. That's a mental disease that does that. 
that person should resign the mayor of Grant, Tom Carr, because it's a mental disease to want to control what people say. Un unbelievable. Now, there's a reasonableness to have things before the council that relate to the city and stuff like that. that that's important. And there should be some types of, you know, watch out. There should be some discretion in there. But that's not what he's doing. If a subject matter is not what he wants it to be, even though it relates to the city, he's not letting people speak. And so he, there that one sign just showed the... Um, the relationship that's coming in because a city council member resigned is being replaced by the mayor's neighbor and business partner and that that's only lived in the city for a year <laughs> you know not a smart move on his part uh, he could have found somebody that agreed with what he was doing who lived in the city a lot longer knew a lot more what was going on in the city okay let's bring it back here and uh, so that's protests going on there. Uh, but we also have what's happening in uh, Crystal, uh, Minnesota. And to, to set this up, there was a news conference uh, early last week that dealt with um, uh, Officer Bergstad of the Brooklyn uh, Center Police Department, I believe it was Brooklyn Center, we'll get that straight on this video, but we're going to see Michelle Gross from Communities United Against Police Brutality set the stage uh, in this video. So let's watch this video. We are here today to talk to you a little bit about the situation in Brooklyn Park um, with an officer by the name of uh, Sergeant Gregory Burstad. Um, officer Burstad was involved with the Metro Gang Strike Force, but has been an officer in uh, Brooklyn Park for some time and has caused, frankly, quite a lot of problems for people in Brooklyn Park. We're going to compare and contrast his situation, however, with two officers with the Crystal Police Department who have had exemplary careers and who um, unfortunately are facing retaliation as a result of their complaints about Officer Burstad. All right, so that's the setup. Uh, uh, Burstad, Brooklyn Park police officer, bad guy, we're going to see some video on him beating somebody up, but 31 complaints against him, uh, but we're going to offset him against two police officers in Crystals, who, Crystal, the city of Crystal, Minnesota, who have a good reputation that are being punished far worse for what we know, nothing, we don't know, they don't know, uh, except that they complained about some corruption in the city. That's all we know right now. And, uh, but Bergstad gets off light for violating somebody's constitutional rights. But because of what happened in Brooklyn Park with Bergstad and the Metro Gang Task Force, that opened up a lot of uh, doors and started a lot of, in, uh, well, it didn't start investigations. That was the problem. Investigations didn't start. So a rally took place in Crystal, and so um, we're going to show the video of the Crystal rally here, uh, and it lays the groundwork for why the rally's there. But I want you to know that Berkstead got six days, uh, well, 40 hours without pay, which is basically a week's pay. And uh, the good cops were, have been off for about a year with pay, but some of them, one of them did not, has not gotten paid for about six weeks, and yet they don't know what they did wrong. So how do you correct the situation? How do you learn from your mistakes if you don't know what it is, except that you turned in bad cops? Well, maybe that's how you learn, that you just don't get to work. Well, that's going to end. Um, but let's watch the video of the Crystal Rally. So let's talk about how we got here. Way back in September, our organization filed complaints on behalf of the Ramirez family who were illegally dispossessed from their crystal home and had all of their property stolen from them. This crime involved an officer from Brooklyn Park who was part of the Metro Grain Strike Force. Let me hear a boo. boo. And because of this, the crime was never investigated. Imagine if you were locked out of your home and every one of your possessions stolen from you. It's wrong. It's so wrong. It's so wrong. Not just your clothes and furniture, but your wedding pictures, your baby pictures, 
your family heirlooms and other no irreplaceable property just suddenly disappear. Wouldn't you want an investigation into that crime? Yes! yes. yes. Well, that investigation never happened, probably because of pre previous police chief Bannock was good friends with Ramsey County Sheriff Bob Fletcher, who ran the finances for the Metro Gang Strike Force. What do you know? Once we filed complaints for the Ramirez family, the cover-up went into full high gear. We asked repeatedly for meetings with City Manager Ann Norris. She's she made three meetings with us, canceled all three, and then sent an email saying, I'm not going to meet with you or the Ramirez family, period. Who said this? Ann Norris, City Manager. She did, again, part of the cover-up. I don't think it appropriate to meet is what she said. That was the text of her email. So finally we said we can't tolerate this cover up anymore and we're coming to the Crystal City Council because we want them to do the right thing. Yes. We told the story of the Ramirez family at the Crystal City Council meeting. Rob Erkenbrock and Alan Watt as involved members of the community heard that story. Did not like what they heard decided that they could not tolerate being part of a police force that wouldn't investigate a serious felony crime like this just because the likely perpetrator is a police, a police officer from another agency. Did not want to be part of that kind of a cover-up. Did not want to. So they stepped forward. Alan Watt, 17-year veteran, never had a single complaint from any members of the community in 17 years sent an email to the city manager, sent an email to the, uh, you know, to other members of the city administration, and even called the FBI to say, hey, this investigation needs to happen. Robin Erkenbach contacted the chief directly and said, this investigation needs to happen. Then, as soon as Stephanie Reverie was appointed chief, she went into high gear retaliating against these officers. It's Wow, uh, it's just, I mean, it just started going. So this Ramirez family, and we don't, you don't have all the details there, but uh, we'll get the uh, uh, website address for Citizens United Against Police Brutality. You can Google that, not Citizens, Communities United Against Police Brutality, but a lot of information. You won't see those videos on here yet, but a lot of information, the paperwork, uh, that took place. Uh, pretty soon the videos I took will be up on that website as soon as I get them to them. Uh, and when I have time to do that, I don't know. But you can see it's very, very important uh, information. And so this Ramirez situation where the police uh, raided the home, illegal immigrants were in the home. There, there's no question about that. And they were disposed illegally. But there was no search warrant on the home because the home, the home was owned by a U.S. citizen. Uh, there was a U.S. citizen there, um, but no warrant. Uh, nothing took place. The home was locked up. And then later on, uh, within four days, well, they were told they would get in, you know, uh, the next day, but they weren't allowed in. And when they were allowed, 
they were told they can have the house back at a certain time four days later and they got there early to see a truck drive off with their possessions. And that home from a U.S. citizen, possessions of a U.S. citizen, no warrant. Where is that property? What, nobody knows. Nobody knows where that property It hasn't been inventoried. Uh, where is it? No investigation into this. Uh, and that's what they were requesting. Well, in the process of that information in that Ramirez case, um, then, and the complaints being filed, then people and police officers, as you saw in that video there on the, the, on the left, a picture of uh, Officer Watt and then Sergeant uh, uh, Erkenbrock, uh, there was a picture of them, honest police officers, went and said, hey, we got other problems here and filed other complaints against the police chief acting now at this time. Uh, police chief Bannock in the past and the current uh, police chief uh, Stephanie Revering. While that created a backlash against these police officers where they got suspended uh, with pay uh, from their job. Well, then that opened up the door. Other people started coming out of the woodwork and we're gonna find out more about that here real quick. But before we get into that, I want you to see this Ramirez U.S. citizen man. He was at the rally, a uh, soft-spoken person, a uh, little overwhelming, but let's uh, see the next video here. Okay, I want to bring up Adrian Ramirez, who is a member of the Ramirez family, who um, has experienced having his possessions taken away from him and all of his possessions stolen. So, Adrian? You know, short video, but there's there's the guy, a real human, a human, and uh, American citizen with constitutional rights, and the government has limits. Well, <clears throat> uh, from there, we're going to get in uh, to a, a, the, another complaint that came up in this whole situation, another problem with Crystal Police Department. So let's uh, hear this video. Let's not forget the thing that happened before before Stephanie Reverie became the chief, when she and another officer wrote a bet about a man they might kill her and about when they could fire him. And the bet was over a bottle of booze. Bottle of booze. And this man had not even started working yet. He hadn't even been hired yet. And they made a bet to determine when this man was going to be fired over a bottle of booze. Internal Affairs investigation, even though she admitted the bet, the bet was in writing, we have the paperwork, we can prove it, this so-called Internal Affairs investigation found no misconduct. Wow. They had decided wow. that Reverend was going to be the next chief, and they were not letting anything get in the way. Wrong. So wow. no misconduct. You know, could you or I get away with something like no. that? No. no. Absolutely no. not. So despite this egregious misconduct, no misconduct was found, and city manager Ann Norris signed off on that no misconduct business, making sure that not only was Stephanie Reverie free and clear, but she was immediately promoted from sergeant to assistant chief, and then right behind that to the chief. So you see, she was on a meteoric rise, even though she engaged in ethical, unethical conduct, and probably illegal conduct. Yeah, uh, you can see what's going on here. And, and I see this pattern not, uh, not only in local government, but I see it in state government. Uh, I saw it in the Supreme Court in the Guardian Ad Litem program where certain people do the dirty work and they keep getting promoted up the, up the ladder. And I saw that with uh, Pseudo Sal, uh, who ended up um, being 
a high administrator in the Supreme Court uh, when she was running the guardian ad litem program, she got caught telling the guardian ad litems not to follow the law, and um, but you know nothing happens. And here's the same situation with uh, Stephanie Revering, who had a misconduct, but they had her on a uh, a fast track to be the chief of Crystal. And who they are is a is a good question. Who is putting her on this fast track? Well, most of those city council people. Are, got voted out, and so we have a lot of a new city council there in Crystal, but they need to clean up the, the situation in Crystal. Uh, otherwise, is it the same people, uh, the same ideology r running the same issues or controlling the same issues? That's why you got to get rid of an ideology. You know, We want people who do the dirty work and do the corruption for us. If you elect the same people that want the corruption to continue as you had before, you don't have a change. You just have a change in names, not a change in ideology. That's the same thing that's trying to be attempted right now in Maplewood. Let's change uh, the names, but we keep our ideology and we keep the uh, taking away the rights. That's why I wouldn't vote for the Nora Slawick um, ticket with uh, Mary Lee Abrams and Kathleen Juneman. Okay, uh, so all this information is getting out in the community. Another person steps forward who got beat up by Officer Bergstad. Uh, it doesn't deal with Crystal, but it deals with another problem with this Officer uh, Bergstad. So let's see this video. You've seen it before, but just piling on, I guess. <laughs> so this is a silent video. Guys fleeing the police should be arrested. Uh, for and actually, that's a level one, low-level felony uh, for fleeing the police. He gets out of the car. He raises his hands. He stops, and the you know, gun's pointed. I mean, where's he going to go? He's surrounded. There's four police cars. He's got his hands raised. Officer on the left's going to grab his hand, and the guy sees uh, this officer Burstad come over from the side. And you know, when you see somebody come at you, you, you know, getting ready to throw a punch, you, you duck. You know, so that's why you saw that reaction. And there he's just getting pounded. And I think I saw us counted approximately 28 punches in the deal. Um, you know, the, the guy's trapped. You know, there's uh, one, two, three uh, officers there. Uh, there I, I believe there's also more. Uh, you'll see them later on. Uh, but he's just getting pounded on, and that you can't do. Uh, you have, they have every right to use reasonable force, but then you read this officer's report, and there's no uh, mention of the force that was used, and they have to say that. He did not mention that he even punched the guy, and that he used violent physical force to restrain uh, uh, this individual. No, no mention of it. Said the guy was running. And if you looked in my past shows, you'll see that. But go to uh, Communities United Against Police Brutality, and you'll see the paperwork um, there. Of, and I, yeah, they don't have the video on there. But you see the video here. You'll see the paperwork there of how he described the situation that this guy was running. Well, he wasn't running, as you saw. Okay, so that just another thing that opened a can of word. It tied bur burst stat into the crystal into the metro gang task force into fletcher chair fletcher in ramsey county and uh uh officer bannock of maplewood because they're all part of that and these are very powerful people in powerful positions and it's very hard to go against them it's hard for a city manager to go against them unless that city manager is part of that same thing, or they have something on the city manager, so that the city manager has to be silent. All right, so now let's go into the opening statement of uh, the, uh, the Crystal City Council about open meeting, and we'll see a similarity with Maplewood and the city of Grant, so let's watch this. Oh, there's the crowd. I'm sorry, this is the crowd of people watching. Uh, the uh, what's taking place uh, a lot of people showed up I'd say about a hundred to 150 people showed up for the rally 
and it packed the audience. Um, so let's go to the next one uh, and see what's taking place there. Just real quickly go over some history from the council perspective. Uh, on June 18th, we received a, the complaints from Officer Wattenberg, and on that same date, um, we got a legal update on the Ramirez case at a work session. At that time, we asked for information regarding the complaints, what could be told uh, to us at that point in time. And at that point in time, the administration pretty much said that, look, it's a data private thing. We can't tell you anything at this point in time. Um, and at the end of the work session, we decided that, OK, maybe it isn't, it's, it's important for the council to have a better idea. So we had a meeting. I had a meeting with senior staff relating to the same question, like, you know, let's get some information about what's going on with this. And you know, pretty much I got the same answer. You know, it's data private, it's personnel issues. Um, the council wasn't very satisfied with that answer, even if it's true. Um, we saw that the complaints were, um, were what they were. I mean, everybody's seen them, they, everybody's seen them on the websites and what have you. Uh, so we, we asked for legal standing from our, our city attorney as to why, um, why we're not getting the answers that we've asked for. Um, and we did get an answer last Friday from our city attorney, and it pretty much reasserted the same stuff that we talked about. Um, this is personnel issue; it's data private. Yeah, so there's a, a a big thing there. It's a personnel issue. It's data pri privacy. That's what they're being told. The people who run the city. That was the mayor speaking. Uh, the people who run the city. Uh, Mike Adams. Uh, next to him was the city manager and Norris. And Norris is saying, I can't tell you what's going on in this city. Oh, really? <laughs> I mean, how ridiculous. Yes, she can. She has a responsibility to tell the mayor and the city council. And the mayor and the city council don't need to file a data practices form to get that information. They ask for it, they get it. They don't get it, she should be fired. Okay, if they're not giving the information, if she gives misleading, incorrect information, she should be fired. Okay, something's going on here. And then the city attorney backing her up, that's a problem. Okay, what do you have here? You, you have chaos. You have a dictatorship. You, you don't have open transparency in government when the people that the people elect to run the city and to oversee the city and oversee the city manager can't get information. It's a huge problem. Goes on in Maplewood, uh, and it's it's going on in Crystal. So Michelle Gross from Communities United Against Police Brutality is speaking before the City Council, addressing this data practice issue. So let's hear what Michelle has to say. Mayor Adams, members of the council, thank you for allowing me to speak. Um, I want to give you a little bit of history reminder as well. Um, as you are undoubtedly aware, you received complaints on June 13th and June 17th, respectively, respectively from um, officers Erkenbrock and Watt um, from our organization as they had asked us to submit these complaints on their behalf. These complaints were returned to our organization with a letter from Ms. Nora stating, these are personnel matters and we will not take them, we will not accept these complaints from you. So the officers, Watts, Officer Watts and Sergeant Erkenbrock filed a complaint through Citizens United, uh, Communities United Against Police Brutality, and we should have that website up there. Um, and just keep that up there the rest of the show. Um, filed a complaint, and the response was uh, personnel matter. Okay. Um, Big problem, but it's a process to go through. So then let's see what happens next here. I'm here to bring to you tonight these exact complaints again. I'm going to return them to you, but I'm also going to give you these same complaints as signed by many, many, many members of the community here. And so I'm going to submit these to you tonight because now that the community has complained about these things, you have no choice but to investigate. And so I will submit these to you at this point. Now, there's, there's a public declaration of service there 
It's coming from the citizens. The complaints are coming from the citizens. The city manager needs to respond. The city council needs to respond to these complaints. And um, the complaints that were sent in by the officers were returned to Communities United Against Police Brutality. You know, we're not looking into this. Go away. So now a new complaint's been set up. But of course, the mayor, uh, as you heard, gave his scenario what was taking place. He also had some other information to add, and I may have, uh, we'll see if that video comes up. I may have messed up on that here, but we'll find out. Um, so why did she do that? The public declaration that you got the complaints, you got the papers, because you wouldn't believe how many times, oh, we never got them. So then something happens that I thought very interesting is one of the city council members makes the following statement, and this is John Budzisuski. Okay, hard name to say. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I do want, um, okay, before we, well, let's go with John, and then we'll go back to um, the, the one you have there. <laughs> I, I love my producers. He's sharper than me here. So. Uh, Michelle, kind of, you were talking about the publications that you mailed to us. Um, I received all of the Lake Council packet uh, dated uh, June 19th, June 18th. They're from CUAPB. So I did get them through my, uh, my Crystal City Council packet. I get a packet every week. So that came to me. So, yeah, they were. There he is. He's acknowledging that they got the papers. That's what, that was important, okay? They can just sit up there and, and then say, mm, we didn't get them, you know? Uh, but he acknowledged that he got them. Very, very important uh, aspect to play here. So now let's go and see what the city council has decided to do uh, in the process. Uh, they, they made this statement before um, citizens' comments before Michelle got to make these comments, so she's been responding to those, but here, let's hear what uh, the city council, the mayor has to say. At that same time though, um, there was an acknowledgement that we do need to have uh, a closed session to have these conversations so that the council has a better understanding as to what's going on. So that's what's happening tonight. So when we go through this process, know that we are in a process, we are doing everything we can as representatives for you. So let's keep this respectful. We understand the complaints that are before us, and we understand an awful lot of, uh, of opinions. We've got a lot of phone calls and a lot of emails this week, um, and, and that's, that's the process. All right, so they are gonna have a closed door meeting and try to get down to the issue here uh, with the city manager and the city attorney and basically I hope they're saying this you better tell us what's going on here because we got a problem we're on the hot seat now as you will hear and uh, we, we better have some answers and, as to what's going on so we don't I don't know what's taking place there I will keep finding out what's going on um, so that's why Michelle was saying trying to lay out the details of here's the complaint we sent to you, the city manager, here's what we got in response. So she's telling the city council what they do not know because the city manager is not telling her. That's what's going on here. So now uh, let's go to uh, the next clip um, and where Michelle just says, hey, it wasn't your problem, but now it is. I understand some of what you're up against in terms of the fact that, frankly, this mess wasn't your mess. It was a mess that you had from the predecessor, your predecessors. But now you're in the position where you need to fix this mess. It is squarely on your shoulders, and it is your responsibility. All right. You got, it wasn't your problem, now it is. So now it's on your shoulder, fix it. Okay, you got elected to help start to deal with this problem, and course here it is here's what I talked about with uh, relating to Maplewood in the election so you're gonna reelect the bad guys uh, so that the problem still exists or are you actually gonna fix the problem the way the citizens want it to be fixed okay and so that's what she's saying um, are you really the bad guys also 
well, you're going to have to show us different because you know how the people behaved last time during the election. How are you going to behave this time? And, you know, veiled threat? Oh, I don't know. You know, I, I, I don't think so. But just saying, hey, this is your responsibility, and it is. Okay, let's go to the next clip uh, where Michelle talks about data practices. I understand about the Minnesota Data Practices Act. I use it liberally to get data frequently. But I'm a member of the community, and I need to use that act to do it. You are members of the city administration, the city council, and you should be able to get data without needing to go through the Minnesota Data Practices Act. So is that an education piece to the city council? You don't have to use data practices. You, they don't get to hide under a personnel matter. I mean, no, you don't. Not, not if you're the mayor in the city council. You have to know what's going on. Otherwise, you get rid of your city manager. That's what you got to do, and that's the game you have to play uh, in this deal. Okay, so let's go to the next clip here. Um, However, I'm not going to you know, question what your city attorney told you. <laughs> I'm not going to question what your city attorney told you. <laughs> uh, no, don't have to question it. I'm just going to tell you how it's supposed to be. Okay, you, you can listen to your city attorney if you want. Here's the other stuff. Here's the reality that's taking place. All right, let's uh, uh, go to the next clip. To allow you to deal with this problem, approximately a week and a half ago, we submitted to you signed and notarized copies of waivers of, and releases of information, authorizations and releases of information for both Alan Watt and Robin Erkenbrack so that you have access to their data. And there was a demand associated with that that, again, was sent to Ann Norris and copied to all of you, demanding that this information be released to you. See, so if the play here by the uh, city manager and Norris is saying, well, we can't release this private data on these officers, or the officers are saying, release it. You know, we, we've signed this, release, let us know what's going on. And so they can't stand behind that for these officers. Now, it's interesting if they're going to say, we're going to stand behind data pra or personnel matter or data practices for uh, the police chief or the city manager. You know, that, you know, still... If they want to play that game, city, manager, city council needs to fire the police chief, the city manager, the city attorney, uh, because they're not playing straight. So let's see the next clip. You have no ability to supervise the work of Ms. Norris if you can't know the things she knows. I don't know how any boss doesn't get to know what their employees knows. This to me is crazy. I've never heard such a thing. And I have several employees who work for me in my job. They're... they're Key point right there. That's this is what this show is about today. You have no ability to supervise if you don't can't get the answers from your city manager. That city manager has to be telling you what's going on, and Norse is not telling you what's going on. This is the issue. That is a a, a, a display of the distrust taking place in that city, and Norse is protecting herself. She's protecting other people and not telling the city council she needs to go. All right, uh, let's see what's next. And more than that, you know, if you are responsible for overseeing Ms. Norris, and Ms. Norris is responsible for seeing the, overseeing the police chief, there is a serious breakdown here. It is our organization's contention that the, these breakdowns are more than an accident. They are quite deliberative, um, including the, failure, the ongoing failure to um, investigate the Ramirez incident. Absolutely. Get rid of, you know, there's a big, huge breakdown in communication. Recognize it, straighten it out. And of course, the city said, we got a closed meeting. We're going to try to figure this out. That's what the mayor said. All right. Uh, uh, next clip. We, at this point in our organization, are calling for Ms. Norris and Chief Reverend to either step down or be let go. It is time for Crystal to clean up its act. It's time for the community to have faith, full faith restored in the system and the process. And the only way that's going to happen is if the corruption ends. Thank you. Clean yes. out. Yes. 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 Clean yes. out. All right. And I, I would add to that the city manager, I mean, the city attorney needs to be looked into here too because if he's given advice to these people that is participating in this cover-up, uh, they, they need to be let go too. 
uh, and they, uh, he needs to step down. Uh, so uh, a very severe situation going on. Now we have a call coming in. So caller, do you have a, a comment or question? Oh, I had a comment there, Tim Kinley. I wanted to thank you very much for all the work that you've been doing and on exposing what's going on in Crystal there. But we're seeing a kind of a trend with all the cities. There's some cities that have freedom, but it seems to me like a trend of some kind of government overpowering the people and telling them this is the way it's going to be. We're going to run things the way we see it to run. But I thank God for the people in Crystal, the people in Grant, the people in Maplewood that do come to the city council meetings and stand up to their government and tell them, we're not happy with the way you're running things in our city, and this is a good thing. Otherwise, the people and the citizens, the taxpayers, are going to be overrun with uh, criminals, and that's what these people are, they're criminals. Yeah, and you make a very good point, and, and something I wanted to mention but hadn't was that the cities are run by the League of Minnesota Cities now. And that's an insurance company that these cities pay into to get uh, legal coverage and to get insurance for uh, liability uh, issues, uh, errors and emissions that they may participate in. And that means the League of Minnesota Cities is really the advisors to the cities. And that's why these statements are read. You get uh, to speak for three minutes, ten minutes on a subject, you don't get to speak, well, you got, we'll get you this information, not at that information. The League of Minnesota said he settle on this issue, uh, fight this issue, and it's not about the citizens. It's not about the Constitution and the citizens' rights and the citizens running the city. It's about the League of Minnesota running the city. They can care less about you. They want their paycheck. Uh, they they want their insurance company. They don't want to, you know, they don't want to be paying out money. And so we have a perversion going on where the city councils today are not being run by citizens, and there's this lack of accountability because you start trampling on people's rights, they will rise up, and that's what's happening now. And I say a large part due to the League of Minnesota Cities. So very good point, caller. Uh, thank you for calling in. Okay, uh, let's go to the next clip here. Uh, if we. <laughs> and if I could just kindly respond again, though, we did receive a letter. Oh, certainly. We again did receive a, a letter from Ms. Norris. I wasn't able to bring it with me tonight, but that said, these are personal matters. We're not addressing them. We're returning your complaints to you. And so, although you've gotten copies, and I'm glad that you have, and I appreciate that, just know that we've already been turned down for any investigation into this matter. That's not an acceptable answer. And, and like oh. There, there again, now the officers release the information, file the complaints again. Uh, they've done this now the second time, and the city manager has already turned them down, uh, even though the city council hasn't addressed the issue yet. Wow, uh, pretty gutsy that on Norris. You're going to see who she is here in a bit. But we get this same city councilman, uh, John Budzisuski. Uh, making another comment and kind of helping out the case here. So let's hear what he has to say. And likewise, I opened these envelopes, so they were not, you know, tampered with in any way. So, you know, that's another thing to understand that information that does come from the citizens through the city, you know, through the city does come to me personally. Even so. Thank you. Thank you. Just added a little bit of detail. I actually, you know, he may be wanting to be heard a little bit more, get put his name in there. But it was, he was the only one, besides the mayor, to comment on any of this. But again, this is citizen forum. You're supposed to be present your information. They aren't supposed to ask questions back and forth. But they do. You know, when they want to, they do. But if you ask them questions, uh, you know, they don't have to answer you unless they want to. But then they say, we're not going to. But then they do. So it's just, you know, if they feel they're under the hot seat, then they do. Uh, okay, then another piece of information comes forward about the Crystal Police officers, uh, the police chief and what's going on there and ties back into Bannock. This is interesting. So more new information is coming. Let's watch this clip. 
question. On what date did you meet with senior staff regarding uh, the uh, officers? July 15th. July 15th. And when did you uh, um, communicate that information to the rest of the city council? Um, I believe it was around July 27th, on or about. July 27th, you're talking um, July 27th, the Saturday, July 27th. That was a Sunday, I believe, yeah. Okay. No, Sunday is July 28th. Okay. Yeah. Well, on or about. On or about July 27th or 28th, mm -hmm. that weekend. Yep. And, um, well, I, I would have to disagree with that because you and I had a discussion about letter that you were going to put forth to uh, senior staff. And you did not talk to me at all about the meeting that you had with, with uh, senior staff. I, I talked to you generally about we're not getting the answers that we've asked for. Right. And did I talk about the senior staff meeting? I think you're right. I think you're correct. I did not. Right. And it would, it would have been nice. <laughs> you know, yeah. they have an update or, you know, a memo or a synopsis of that meeting. I mean, if you're going to have a meeting with senior, senior staff regarding this issue, uh, we should all be informed about that. Well, my attempt on that call was to inform the whole council, and I did talk to everybody that week. I apologize for that. Okay, that was the wrong. That that wasn't the video I said it would be, but is the one I had in the list. Um, here, the situation arose where the mayor was caught with not explaining things quite exactly as things had taken place, and uh, City Council Member John. Uh, basically said, hey, called him on the carpet. This isn't what uh, you said. Uh, we have, I did not know this information. You talked to the city staff, but we have no clues to what was said. And let's get the right story here. And they, they squared it away there um, in the situation. And I see I may not have this uh, video um, for uh, the Maplewood. Uh, uh, I don't have the video of this complaint. I think I messed up and didn't get it in. But let's uh, let's go to the next clip, uh, Daryl one, because there's everything's just uh, speeding up and uh, you know getting large. So let's watch uh, Daryl one. I'm standing before you again, and at the start of this months ago. You know, I said that uh, the things were going to be swept under the rug and nothing was going to be looked into, that, uh, that we would be back and we would be much louder. And uh, I remember people looking at me like I was speaking a foreign language. Now, the community's here and now they're speaking louder than CUAPB. All right, um, they've been there before, uh, it's building, it's growing, more information is coming out. Another citizen was saying, hey, uh, these police officers, our house got burnt down, stuff was stolen, um, there's other corruption going on. Uh, I know Officer Watts, he's a good man, but there are other police officers that aren't so good and so new information and when I was standing in the crowd uh, videotaping and people were talking to people and they were saying well this is what happened to me I heard the last three separate people saying they had personal experiences with some crystal police officers uh, that and some were in tears that doesn't make them truthful but uh, just saying that hey we had this problem so people are trying to get together it's just growing and growing and growing and uh, you know good men do something about it and I hope you're that type of person who will do what they can do to help somebody who's down and out uh, on these situations and in this situation we need to help good officers uh, who expose the bad officers uh, in the situation Santa showed up we're going to show a short clip of him uh, showed up and speak in favor of Officer Watts and uh, Erkin Brock. So let's hear a little bit about what he has to say. I almost applauded for Santa Claus too, so I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
Okay, uh, the, the one before that, uh, number eight. Uh, but there, that was after Santa. You're not supposed to applaud when somebody says something or boo. Everybody applaud. A lot of people applaud when Santa said something. And that was John, the council member, saying, oh, boy, I almost blew it because I was applauding. Santa said something. Let's see what Santa has to say. And, Just uh, play a minute of you it. You have my email address there. If you don't mind, I would appreciate... Uh, some comment back from either you or one of the council on uh, a special group to go along with the city council to find out what's going on. That's I mayor. Uh, that's city manager city Norris manager. there. <laughs> okay, that's city manager Norris, and uh, we're out of time. We're getting uh, out of time here. Right. But what I want you uh, there's an update on Crystal City. But I want you to know uh, we got elections coming up in Maplewood, and we can't vote for Slawick, Marianne Abrams, uh, or Kathleen Juniman. It's just the same old problem that will create more debt for the city. You got uh, Diana Longry for mayor, who's my recommendation. Any of the other council members are good. Uh, Rebecca Cave, who's currently on the council, Margaret Barron's, uh, good choice. Um, these people will be financially responsible. They, they better be. Uh, also, uh, Roger Samarini is running, a businessman in Maplewood who knows how Maplewood treats businessmen. Uh, he's seen it not only in his personal property, but in his uh, business. And Warren uh, Weber. Uh, Warren, what, Warren Wessel. So you're going to have to do your research, folks. Uh, but anyway, if you don't stand up for other people's liberties, who's going to stand up for yours? And good men don't do nothing. God bless. Have a great week.